Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is a Grammy-nominated, stellar award-winning singer, songwriter, keyboardist, and choir director. And he's here today to talk about his new album, Greater Than, and his new single, He Turned It. Help me welcome Mr. Ty Trebek to the show. Hey, Ty, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. It's finally good to have you on this show. We got so much to talk about because you got this great new album that debuted with 20,000 scans in his first week, so congratulations to you. Thank you so, so, so much. Now, I want to talk about the album Greater Than, and I want to talk about the inspiration behind it. And when you titled it Greater Than, what was going through your mind when you was thinking about the title of the album? Well, I, it, I got it from a, um, a Bible study I was doing. And the scripture says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So I was studying for my Bible study, and greater is he that is in me that in in you than he that is in the world, it came up. That's a very familiar um, scripture, but it just hit me in a different way. And then songs just started coming along those same lines, and then we just we just couldn't stop. And so uh, now we have the whole project called Greater Than. It's not us that's greater than; it's He that is in us. I know, because that's First John four and four. So I love that scripture. And you also have a single that's out right now entitled He Turned It. So tell us about the single He Turned It. Woo! That song is like the uh, I don't know the the praise break of two thousand of the two thousands. I don't know. That song is just a, a celebration of the fact that uh, you know God is able to turn your situation around, and all things work together for good. So it's a testament. It's a celebration uh, of what of, of His sovereignty and of His grace. So people who hear that song. You can remember the time when you thought it was over or when you thought you was going to give up, but then something happened. Some people call it a divine inspiration. I like to call it He Turned It. <laughs> like Ricky Dillard's He Turned It, and you got Vashawn Mitchell's Turning Around for Me. and So everybody, yeah. the situations are turning around. So we know if that's not the theme for 2013, God is turning some stuff around. If I don't know nothing, I know yeah, that. <laughs> I know that for a fact. Amen. Now I want to talk about you and your family because your your career is truly a family affair because your wife works with you, your sister, your brother, they were all a part of GA. Now, do you and your family still work together? Oh, yes. My sister still works with me. My mom is still very much in it. My my wife is a part of management as well. So, and my brother, uh, as often as he can, he keep coming and, and still, you know, works with us. So, it's still very much a family affair, and I'm just grateful to have them, you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, it's a wonderful thing. Because music and ministry is truly in your blood, because I read that your father was a pastor, your mother was a minister, she was also a well-known disc jockey in Philadelphia. So it just run, <laughs> runs just, just through your veins. So you, you was destined to be here, I believe. <laughs> just reading it's your bio. <laughs> I don't know what, but something was gonna happen. So, how long were you a choir director before you started GA? Were you a choir director in your church as well? Yeah, I don't know how long to be. Honest. It had to be about two or three years because I was, yeah, because I was always playing in the church, like the keyboard or the organ, and then my mom would just put me up in front of the choir for like youth day or something, and I never wanted to direct, but. um you know, she put me up in front of her and it just kind of grew to, you know, what we see today. You know, as kids, because, you know, you just said something that's really important because our parents, they'll put us up, you know, in front of everybody. But when did you realize that you finally had the gift of music? So you finally decided, I'm going to take this on because I know this is something God called me to. Um, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if I had an aha moment or well, I don't know if I had a... Uh, you know, the song got knocked off this horse and became Paul. I don't know if I had that. I was kind of progressing and continuing in that way, you know, to bring up a child in the way that he should go. So I just kept going in that way, in that way, in that way. And when I when I had my first GA rehearsal, honestly, um, I had just written all these songs because, you know, me and my brother, and we were all playing in the garage all the time, making up music. And I put words to the music, and I really just wanted to hear them. That's all. I just wanted to hear what it sounded like. So when I called them together to some friends and family that I knew can sing, I was like, okay. <laughs> when I heard that first person, I was like, okay, this is this is beyond what I thought. And uh, 
you know, I guess that that is my aha moment. I guess <laughs> I guess that's the moment when I figured this is real, this is serious. So let me take it a little bit more seriously. Because I have to commend you and J Moss. I had started a hip hop uh, Christian dance group, and it, it's okay. amazing. It's amazing, you know, when you start a hip hop Christian dance group, and when God give you a vision that you're going to go into places that you know uh, gospel music um, was basically not allowed to go into. So you and J Moss yeah. gave my dance group music to be able to go into places, and I would never forget that we did. I want it all back for the Golden State Warriors. Wow. It was during their um, playoff game in Oakland to a sold out concert and I'm telling you I wanted all back was booming through the speakers it was such a blessing to a sold out <laughs> audience <laughs> to, to be jamming to die tribute I want it all back and we did that song in so many secular places where where gospel music wasn't even um welcomed at the time but we were able to take your music and Jay wow. Moss's music and have that bass booming and so I just wanted to commend yeah. you on the music that you gave us to be able to go and minister to and still bring wow. uh, glory to God in arenas like that so I just want to say thank you that was just a side wow note. <laughs> thank you so much that song was awesome that song was also featured on so you think you can dance that show oh really <laughs> yeah somebody danced to that I was like what <laughs> So yeah, so, so yeah, you gave us some music, which was great. And, and it, it was undeniable because the beat was there. It was slamming yeah. through the speakers. Everybody was jamming. So I just want to say again, thank you so much. And, and speaking of you and your music, you are now with Motown Gospel. What is it like for you to be on such a prestigious label with such a rich history? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an honor. I didn't, I didn't sign up to them. I signed up to uh, EMI, and they, and they did a, you know, a deal with, Universal, which became this. So um, I thought my thing was much, you know, different, but it became greater than <laughs> what I expected. So it's an honor always. We were on Sony before this, another major mainstream label. So we're familiar uh, with, with the mainstream label, but to be a part of Motown is a little different, and it's it's, a, it's an honor. So we're we're happy, and we were the first artist out. Or Motown gospel, they were taking a chance. They took a chance with us, and uh, they're glad they took a chance. I'm glad they took a chance, and Kingdom Music is being uttered down globally. Amen. And you work with some mainstream artists, which I'm sure a lot of people aren't even aware of. You work with Will Smith, Sting, Usher, and Justin Timberlake. What was it like for you to work with those artists and being a gospel artist, well, but being invited to work <clears> with them? Mm -hmm. So some of them I uh, actually worked with, like we saw them and worked with them. And some of them, we just was in the studio at one time, and they were in the studio another time. But it was still, you know, a, a surreal to be a part of those projects. And, you know, bad and great stuff at that time, to really just, uh, you know, uh, be, be a light and to be exposed. So, we can, so it, it kind of helped me uh, uh, shape my ministry so I can know how to speak from a, from a, from a world view, point of view. It's just... It was a culture shock to me coming from such a small <laughs> Pentecostal church to stages with like Faith Hill and Don Haley and Justin Timberlake. It was a culture shock, but you know, it, it showed me how to minister to people like that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm grateful to God that I didn't really get caught up in it. Like, oh my God, we're here. But I was on stage studying. I was on stage studying. Like, if I was to sing here, how would I give them Jesus? You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be religious. I'm not trying to be a role model right now. I'm telling you my honest thoughts. I was like, how can I, if I were to sing here, how can I give them Jesus? How, how can I package a song in a way that they'll get it and not be, you know, condescending or judgmental? So it helped us shape ministry, and uh, I was grateful for that season. Now, we need to know, where do you get your energy from? Do you drink a Red Bull or a rock star before your concerts? Because you have energy oh, like Lord. no other. Lord, most, <laughs> most, most of the time, it's just Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I am it's serious. Just, most of the time, it's just Jesus, period, period. And I don't know, it's the joy of the Lord, man. A amen. Look, amen to that. And, and before we go, I want people to kind of get to know Ty Tribbett a little bit. Ty, what do you like to do in your spare time when you're not in the studio, when you're not on stage? What do you like to do? I almost forgot this answer because 
you know, when you're not on stage or doing something or in the studio, you're always preparing for it or on the way to da 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 da. So I almost forgot how to live and what I like. <laughs> I was talking to my wife about this, like, dang, I, I don't know what I like no more, you know. <laughs> but I think I like basketball and, and bowling and, uh, you know, stuff like that, spending time with my kids, going to the movies. Uh, chilling, you know what I mean, just doing regular life stuff, you know, I'm a regular guy, I love funny, fun, crazy things, and then I like to chill as well, I got a real, 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 real chill downside that a lot of people don't know, where I can just sit there and just be quiet, yes, I can, it's possible, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's not often, but <laughs> I love to do that. Now, what's your favorite food, what do you like to eat? Salmon. Salmon, I love like teriyaki salmon or, or lemon butter, pepper, whatever, lemon pepper, butter, whatever, salmon. Uh, salmon, rice, and broccoli, I'm good. And mm. I'm not even, you know, oh, that's it. That's me every day, all day, I'm good. That sounds good. Okay, now besides yeah, yourself. I'm about to get some right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tana, besides <laughs> yourself, if I was to sneak into your iPod, who would I see in there? What other artists besides you? Right now, before my, my phone rung and it interrupted, not that you interrupted, but it was time for us to talk, but it cut off uh, Jesus Culture. I love Jesus Culture. Bethel Music. I love mm-hmm. Bethel Music. Um, also, uh, 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 Emily King. She's a mainstream artist. And it's Emily King and Tori Kelly. Tori Kelly is another mainstream artist. They're just um, amazing uh, singers. Um I don't know who else right now that I consistently listen to, but that's it for now. Okay, and this is going to be my last question. If you were to go on a luxury vacation, you and your wife, where would you like to go? We love Aruba, and we we we, we like Antigua a lot. They got this, you know, this spot in Antigua. But we've never been to Hawaii, so we would love to go to Hawaii. My sister went. Uh, for her honeymoon, they came back bragging. So I was like, "All right, we got to go." So I, I, I would answer say Hawaii. Okay, so it sounds good. I love Hawaii. We, me and my husband, we plan on going back. So that that's a good uh, destination spot. Okay, do we have any upcoming tour dates? Where are you going to be? Where people can go and catch you yeah. and catch the new album? Yes, um, you have to go to Times of it worldwide. But on the, the top of the year, we're going to be touring for the album. Uh, I'm grateful that we have several tours on the table. We don't know which one we're going to go with. So I'm grateful to have that kind of problem. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, but next year, definitely, the first quarter, we will be on tour uh, in a city near you. So go to Ty Tribbett for your local list. I mean, TyTribbett.com for your local listings or, you know, Twitter, Facebook. Come on. We're all on there just under uh, Ty Tribbett. Okay, so to catch up, Ty Tribbett on Facebook and on Twitter. And if people want to pick it up yeah. right now, can they get the album on iTunes or Amazon right now? Yes. All right. Wherever music is sold, <laughs> you hear that word, sold, not played, not YouTube, but wherever music is sold, <laughs> you can go to the Amazon, iTunes, anywhere you can go get it. And uh, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I know that's why I had to make that clear where it's sold, y'all. Not free downloaded, oh. not listened to. I love that. <laughs> love that. Right, right. Well, Ty, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a truly a pleasure having you on the show. We definitely have to have you back. I cannot wait. Thank you for having me, okay? You're welcome. Have a blessed day. You too. God bless.